Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us both online and in person. For today's presentation, we're very excited to feature Bravio Technologies, a digital entertainment company actively pursuing a listing on the CSE under the ticker symbol WIN, W-I-N. For today's presentation, we're joined by CEO Paul Carroll, who will be providing a corporate overview and has requested that if you wish to ask questions during the presentation pertaining to the slides, please feel free to do so. Please be mindful of the cameras situated throughout the room as this is a live webcast being broadcasted to a large online audience. And without any further ado, I'll pass on to Paul. Thanks, guys. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for coming and thanks for tuning in online. Um, I'm here today to present Bravio Technologies, or soon to be Bravio Entertainment. We're currently uh, conducting a, an RTO on the, on the CSE with the uh, company uh, Lotto Gopher, symbol L-O-T-O -O on the CSE. I'll be talking to you today a little bit about Bravio Entertainment, the resulting issuer, uh, where we operate in the market, the type of industry we operate in, how we do it and uh, why we do it, and uh, moreover, how we differentiate our business against other types of business, businesses in our industry. So, forward-looking statement, hopefully everybody's read that and understood it. Um, not too much to discuss really on that page, but uh, make sure you familiarise yourself with that particular page. The company overview, Bravio. Bravio Technologies is a business-to-business -business and a business-to-customer digital entertainment platform. We operate specifically on mobile phones, or majority on the mobile phone, and we focus on the world lotteries, uh, and we allow consumers, any consumer, any time, anywhere, to purchase a lottery ticket in some of the world's largest lotteries, such as the Powerball uh, and the Mega Millions in, uh, in America. Typical transaction cost, that line item's in there purely for the economic value of the business. Uh, I think it speaks for itself. We acquire a ticket at real face value for $2 on behalf of any consumer anywhere. And we add, or we tack on a small administration fee of $5.20 per ticket. The economic value of the business works really well. And that's a, a line item in there, which we'll, we'll deep dive into that uh, a little bit later on in the presentation. Having status as a lottery messenger service, that allows Bravio to operate anywhere in the world where we adhere to lottery legislation, but we don't need a license to do it. We leverage from existing licenses that our lottery partners already own or acquire. Over 65 million members since 1999, that's part of the RTO acquisition. Lotto Gopher owns a company called Plasmanet, which runs a URL freelotto.com. That is the largest lottery aggregator of lottery players on the planet. Since conception, since 1999, it's aggregated over 65 million uh, members. Um, and we will also, as we travel through the presentation, we'll touch on that a little bit more and deep dive in that, in that particular line item. Sports clubs and lotteries is a, is a vertical that Bravio operate in. It's a different lottery style. It's a business to business lottery offering. We white label our platform and allow sports clubs, charities, and uh, anybody with a database to supply their customers their own lottery. Um, Bravio operates in the online gaming and gambling sector purely because lotteries fall into that category of three. Uh, lotteries is the largest part of sales, gross sales, in the, in the online gaming and gambling market sector. The other two uh, parts of the online gaming sector have around about 25 to 35% on digital sales, the lottery industry, which is the largest, has around about 8% of digital sales. Investment highlights, number one, massive database of potential players. We launched a few applications into the market, uh, digital applications on, uh, on mobile phone networks, and since then we've been aggregating data continuously, and we still are continuously aggregating players and data, or potential lottery players. The numbers speak for themselves again, 0.1% of our database we convert into potential lottery sales, a average around about 11 million in our top line uh, over the course of a 12 month period. And, we'll let, and I'll explain a little bit more about that as we travel along. Exceptionally strong brand, the URL and trademarks. Freelotto.com is probably the most recognised lottery brand on the planet in the free lottery space. It's got the most active users, it's been going the longest. 
and it speaks for itself, freelottery.com. We have around about seven odd million hits on that URL per month uh, to date, and it still, still today has a really strong brand. Low customer acquisition costs. These are key enablers to any business to be successful. Strong brand, low acquisition cost. Bravio's business model is we've blitz scaled for probably two years now, so now what we do is we consolidate and we convert. The consumer acquisition cost in Bravio has already taken place. What we do now is we convert the customer. We've got around about 400 million active users on our networks that we operate on, whether it be from a mobile network, whether it be for a partnership, or whether it be freelotto.com. We have around about aggregated 400 million users that we can penetrate, attract, convert, and sell a lottery ticket to. High margin business. I think we've touched on that on the first one. The economic value of the lottery industry is fantastic. Um, margins should exceed anywhere between 16% to around about 38% on margin. Recession resistant, well, everybody everywhere wants to win the lottery. I think in 2008 was one of the largest uh, years for, for lottery sales or online digital gaming in general. I think 2008 was a, was a fantastic year for our, our, our business and uh, most other businesses in the, in the digital gambling space. Industry experience management team. Uh, that's a true fact. Industry experience spans back many, many years. Uh, I started in, uh, in Germany with a, a casino operator, one of the largest casino operators on the planet. Went through Asia Pacific and then came back through the Caribbean, back into the UK and still here, uh, telling the tale to this very day. Uh, Multi-generational gaming and op gambling operator. Uh, sorry to say. The business model, very simple, Bravio's business model. We don't necessarily market our business. We spend very, very little on marketing. and we have a very different business model to the traditional online gaming and gambling market sector. Partner with, ex with established networks. We've got uh, partnerships with uh, Indian mobile networks, NCEL, XCR, Vodafone, Geo Reliance is our, our next target uh, operator. And then what we do, we, we lodge our applications on their network and then direct market to their mobile users. Conversion of existing database to paid users, that gets back to the uh, low economic uh, value of acquisition. We'd rather convert a customer that is on a network that we already tap into rather than go and try to find a, a user or a lottery player, which becomes extremely expensive. And we do that we, by rev share with our partners, whether it be a charity, whether it be a sports operator, whether it be a mobile phone network, whoever it may be, we leverage off their database, we sell lottery tickets to their players, and then we do a rev share rather than a market share. Paul, can you talk more about how you go about converting those customers? Bravio owns its um, proprietary software and hardware, so we have an extremely powerful CRM that aggregates the data on the mobile network. So we follow that consumer through data analytic, business intelligence and artificial intelligence. So we know exactly what the consumer does, when he does it, how he does it, his average spend per month, et cetera, so on and so forth. And then we direct target the high economic value consumer in the Western world and uh, the mass consumers in, a, in the low economic valued uh, world we operate in. So there's very different ways we do convert the consumer. Moreover, the CRM is very powerful. It understands the, the player or the consumer, and then we retarget that consumer and ask them to rather buy more lottery tickets if they're already buying. If they're playing for free, we ask them to pay a small fee uh, and expand that way, or we look at the database, the dormant database, ask them to play for free, move them up to paid, and so on and so forth. So it's a really, it's a really technical part of the business, um, how we do convert. Uh, I could probably spend all day talking about how we convert consumers, um, but basically the CRM does everything for us and it's our own proprietary hardware, software, uh, front end. So we've developed that ourselves over probably three or four years. That's it, very basic, partner, sell and split the, split the revenue. Very different to how normal uh, casino or slot companies operate. Bravio is a shop front for world lottery sales. That's where we want to be. If you look at the industry we operate in, which is the online gaming and gambling industry, we have um, slots and casino, we have sportsbook operators, and we have the lottery industry. They're the three. We've touched on that before. You can rattle 10 names of sportsbook operators. 
you can rattle probably five or six names of casino and slot operators who totally dominate the market. But when you get to the lottery industry where we sit and where we operate, there's not that many, if any, that you can sit there and rattle off the top of your head. General consensus is there isn't anybody dominating that digital lottery market. It's sort of a crossroads in the industry right now. Um, the traditional lottery operators don't want to sell online. They want to keep consumers going to the local newsagent to buy lottery tickets um, because they deem it detrimental to the newsagent and their business as a whole. However, I'll explain a little bit more when we get to that part of the, the slide, how we help uh, the uh, lottery operator and the news agents scale their business as well as ours. So basically, the shop front for World Lotteries, there isn't one. Bravio is that new shop front, and we do that through various URLs. And the reason why we've got different URLs, we do different lotteries and charge people differently, and we have different uh, levels of lottery uh, exposure. Different URLs, same business model. You enter through the URL, you play a lottery in some sort of fashion, which we'll explain a little bit shortly, our, our different ways of, uh, of monetization. Ultimately, you can play a lottery and you have the opportunity to win various prizes. The platform is very basic. It's exactly like log logging on to Powerball. You can pick, you can choose, you can syndicate, you can pay weekly, monthly, or annually. Exactly the same front end as a lottery operator. And Bravio actually acquires in the Powerball, for instance, the ticket, the original ticket in the original lottery for the original consumer. So you as the consumer sit here and can say, is it, is it legal? Do I get my ticket? Well, yes, you do. We have offices and localization in all the jurisdictions we sell lottery tickets. We acquire the ticket for you on your behalf, real time, real ticket. So you do get the ticket in the lottery and you do claim your prize if you are a winner. How we do that, if it's a higher prize, we ask you to travel to New York and all of America or wherever we decide to buy your ticket, collect your winnings. If it's a high value winning, if it's a low value winning, we'll cash in for you and recredit your e-wallet, which sits on the back of our system. Anything over 10 or $15, you can cash out and we'll recredit your credit card. Uh, ultimately, we ask if it's a large win, we do want to publicize that. So we'll ask you to go and collect it. And I'm sure if you win the $600 million Powerball in America, you'll be on a plane tomorrow. Um, I'll be with you. Um, ultimately, if it's, a small, if it's a small fee, we don't recredit the credit card because of the microtransactions. We recredit your e-wallet. When you have enough money in your e-wallet, you can recredit the whole lot of your credit card. Quick snapshot of the brands. Freelotto.com, the largest lottery operator in its space in the world today. Bravio are acquiring that through the reverse takeover of Lotto Gopher. Planet Lotto is a ticketing platform that allows anybody anywhere to enter and play any lottery they wish. We, I think we supply around about seven of the world's largest lotteries, or sorry, 11 of the world's largest lotteries on that platform. It's a beta testing, it's ready to go. The minute we transact, we'll finish off our beta testing, hook in the bank, and then allow anybody anywhere to buy a ticket, and then we can cross-sell to this data, to this ticketing platform, our existing huge database of around about 400 million people. Foundation lotteries and sports lotteries, that's our B business to business uh, white label platform. So basically with that, we can partner with any sports club anywhere and offer their data the opportunity to play a lottery. It's a bit like 50-50 what you guys have here, but we have uh, digitalized it. It's uh, any time, any place, anywhere offering. Uh, the sports club can solicit lottery ticket sales to their own database and then the sports club take a revenue share um, for grassroots or whatever they want to spend their money on. It's normally to gain economic uh, value for the, for the, local, the lo local communities. Lotto Gopher is the target entity for the RTO. What we're doing with Lotto Gopher is because we've got our other brands already in place, we're, um, we're looking at linking in uh, digital currency into Lotto Gopher. We've partnered with Metaverse Capital, which is a CSE or a TSXV listed uh, cryptocurrency blockchain company. They've got access to one of the largest uh, cryptocurrency exchanges in Canada. We're currently looking at partnering the two companies where we allow Lotto Go for users to, to buy Powerball tickets with cryptocurrency. It converts on the exchange, so we don't get in, uh, any issues with, uh, with cryptocurrency. We transact in in US dollars, euros, or, or Canadian dollars, but ultimately it allows a, a, a cryptocurrency exchange to buy Powerball tickets with their cryptocurrency. 
what the truck really knew. I don't, it, buying lottery tickets with crypto isn't new, but what we do differently is we, we allow the consumer to cash out. In cash costs, we eff effectively we buy the ticket locally and we are playing the real lottery. So he buys his ticket with crypto, we cash out the, the difference in, in, in dollars and cents. Uh, however, we can allow the consumer to cash out in, um, in hard cash rather than crypto. Right, freelotto.com, we'll deep dive into this a little bit longer. Uh, that company's been going since 1999. It's one of the oldest and most recognized URLs and lottery companies on the planet. It's got an absolutely huge database. Um, and its active database isn't 65 million, don't get me wrong, but we want to convert a lot of the players from free to played. It's a free lotto platform initially. It allows a consumer to play six styles of lotteries a day with roughly three prizes per lottery for free. If you want to upskill or if you want a little bit more uh, consumer engagement, we request that you pay you $15 a month and then we'll give you a little bit added value. We, we bring a, additional games, more games. Uh, we are introducing a, a whole new set of games for this particular platform for your $15 a month and you pay it on a subscription. Paid out over 100 million in prize money, that line item's in there just to give uh, confidence and clarity around that the, the business actually works. People do win. Uh, we are looking at restructuring the winning formula around this platform as we speak. I think I touched on it earlier, 7 million plus websites. It's the highest grossing URL in any lottery platform anywhere in the world. If anybody types into Google free lotto, that website's going to come up. It's been around a long time. It has the most hits from anybody, uh, any other lottery website on the planet. Sorry? Why wouldn't I go directly and you, invest in my lottery tickets with, with this rather than you guys? Since this is free. Yes, correct. But we own that. So you'll come in there and you'll play for free. You can't buy. That's that's a lottery that we 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 set that lottery up. We we use somebody else's random number generator. So we set the winning formula for this lottery platform. It's free, granted. But for free, you've got to, you can play a lottery, but you've got to do certain things. You've got to go back into the lottery URL and check your own numbers, for instance. Uh, a lot of people don't like that. Better than paying two bucks and then paying you five. Yeah, but that, that, you're not going to enter the Powerball if you play for free. That's, that's the key scenario. You can play different styles of lotteries. You can win a car. You can win up to a million. Don't get me wrong. It's a really cool asset to have. But traditionally, lottery players like the the buzz of winning the 600 million, so they'd rather pay a little bit more money, depending on, on, on the target market, to enter the Powerball in America. If you can. We do have a lot of players. What we do is we convert our free players into paid players, then paid players into Powerball players, and so on and so forth. There's a, there's a business strategy, really heavy business strategy in amongst this. We've obviously had three, over three billion single games played since 1999. If you work it out, we've got quite a lot of players. We do every day, six games a day. Every game's got three possible chances to win. Um, and you can work the numbers out. I do have really drilled down numbers on that. If anybody wants them, I can forward it on after the presentation. But you're correct. A lot of people do play for free, which we like. And then we can cross-sell other, other brands and other products that we have to them free players. And then we can upskill the paid players on this platform to uh, free players to paid players. And that's what we do really well. Planet Lotto, we touched on it. Live feeds from the existing lotteries around the world. We've got 11 lotteries, live fed into the back end, real time, real countdown, real jackpots. You log on to this platform, you can play any of these lotteries you wish. Traditionally, you need to be in the jurisdiction, should you wish to play. People ask me, can I play the Powerball if I sit in Canada? Well, yes, you can on our platform. What we do, it's, it's a, if you can take, in, in, in essence, if you go on holiday and you go to America and you buy a lottery ticket in America and fly back to Canada and you win, you're still eligible to collect your winnings. So what we do is we say, you don't go to, on holiday, you don't have to fly there, we'll do that for you. So you come in, you pay me your money first and we buy your lottery ticket on your behalf, locally, through a local agent, scan the ticket and send it to you and it sits on the back end of, our, of, of the platform. Getting back to the digitalization of the lottery industry, the local lottery operators, the Powerball lottery operator, don't like uh, synthetic lotteries or gambling on lotteries because you're not connecting to the lottery. There's a lot of that around these days. But we connect to the lottery, we buy the lottery ticket from the original news agent. So we're enhancing the news agent's business, we're enhancing the jackpot because we're buying a ticket, and we're allowing consumers to buy a lottery ticket that can't buy a lottery ticket anywhere else. You can't go onto the Powerball and buy a lottery ticket if you live in Canada, but you can come through our technology and we can do it for you. 
Uh, hence, that's why we, uh, we're partnered really well with the, the existing lottery companies and the news agents, because we're driving traffic to the news agents to collect the ticket. Sports lotteries, business to business. Perth is our inaugural uh, o o lottery operator. We're launching it on a, on a football network, so we will allow the Perth Glory database to acquire tickets in the Perth Glory lottery. It's branded, it's coloured, it's colour-coded to the vision. So basically what we have here is we have a 250,000 weekly jackpot. You can log on, you can pick your tickets, you can do random, random numbers, quick picks, exactly as you can in the normal lottery. And that, that platform is solicited to the partner. So that one will be solicited to Perth Glory supporters. And we donate 25% of every single ticket we sell back to the club. Uh, we fall under the license and legislation of the club. The club goes to the state government and acquires a lottery license. We then supply the technology and smarts to help them run a lottery under their own guidance and their own jurisdiction. Ten, uh, that 25% that is, is, is a donation of every ticket we sell on their network. That can be branded for anybody anywhere. We have a $250,000 insured jackpot. So basically what we can do now is we can go to anybody anywhere, another club or another charity. Front end will be branded the new partner. The same jackpot, so all the people that log on to this one, log on to the second and third and fourth, play for the same jackpot, 250,000. We've uh, engaged uh, a lottery exchange, or if you like to call it a lottery exchange, or a crypto exchange, where we're going to allow cryptocurrency e-wallet holders to buy lottery tickets in the Powerball in America by using cryptocurrency or any currency which they wish. The currency is converted on the exchange, then the finance for the ticket drops into our system in hard cash, and then we pay out in hard cash should the consumer want to be paid in cash, or crypto. If he wants to be paid in crypto, we'll buy cryptocurrency. Little different business model to where it is now, but we've got every other style of lottery covered already within the branding of the business, so that's our, our new uh, beta tested model at the minute. Again, it's the same business model. We're not going to go and market that. We're going to solicit to the existing database of the current cryptocurrency holders in e-wallets. E so I think you'll see the general trend of how we operate our business. We don't go to market. We're never going to go on TV and, and, and market our businesses. We partner with other people that have got great databases, whether it be a telecommunication network or whether it be a sports club or a charity. And then we offer our services to their data. Assets that we launched, I think I touched earlier, we launched these assets probably um, two or three years ago. Um, if you look at the global gaming industry as a whole, 30% of sales is in Southeast Asia. So we launched these applications, specifically music and M social. We launched two applications in Southeast Asia, knowing that the trend of sales is in that area. And that's going to be our, uh, one of our target markets that we want to capture to sell lottery tickets to. So we've been constantly downloading data of two mobile, three mobile networks with these, with these two applications. Real House is uh, part of the transition, part of the transaction. That's a digital uh, video streaming platform. Really, really cool tech. Um, we've, or we're buying that solely sol sol just purely because of our partners in the mobile network have asked us to enhance our uh, content and offer them movie streaming and all sorts of different sexy, cool stuff. And that, that, that will facilitate that transaction. So, we will also bring that into our lottery space and do live lotteries and all sorts of different things on the back of that transaction. But these two have been live for probably two or three years now. 1.4 million Facebook followers, 1.2 million. That's on there, I think, it's just to prove the point that we understand how social media works and how the power of social media when it comes to sales. A lot of our competitors don't do that. A lot will go for a free lot, or they haven't quite got it yet. Even though they're part of our brand, post RTO, we'll engage our social network operations and enhance their social feeds. Selector is a digital sports platform that uh, it operates in the fantasy sports world where it sort of sits under the radar when it comes to online gaming and a bit like DraftKings whether it does it need to be licensed does it not there's still a grey area there so telecommunication companies have adopted daily fantasy sports and we've launched that in Myanmar uh, soon to be Fiji. Um, it's just another market that we want to acquire data from, understand the consumer behaviour habits and then potentially sell them a lottery ticket. So these basically constantly feed data into the ecosystem of Bravio and then we convert the consumer without having to go and acquire it. These, these data assets acquire the consumer on our behalf. 
global management team. I don't think anybody's ever stood up here and said the team's not very good, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> but um, I'll just quickly skim through these. You can Google these guys, you can do what you like, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you want. David is a co-founder of um, Bravio. Uh, me and him, uh, you, Val and Joe, sort of set the whole infrastructure up of Bravio and the business modeling two or three years ago. Um, David's 12 years experience at KPMG, um, I think six years as a partner. He's extremely good at penetrating economic, low economic value mobile networks with content. Um, very difficult task to do, dealing with an Indian mobile conglomerate and asking them to launch your application on their network and cross-sell is very difficult. David's very experienced at that and he's a very experienced uh, managing director. Yuval, he sits in our offices in Tel Aviv. He's uh, one of the pioneers in the mobile messenger, lottery messenger industry. I think he was the first person ever to launch a, a, a lottery messenger service. Uh, he owned a company called Lotto Yard, which sort of pioneered the industry from a tech space. And then he moved into sales through call centers, etc. Extremely powerful operator, extremely good at what he does. It's a pleasure to work with Yuval. Joe Phillips heads the pack, company chairman. Joe, Joe was the visionary behind the, the, the listing in Canada. We didn't want to list in Canada. We, we thought about UK, Hong Kong, Singapore, or somewhere exotic, but oh no, we ended up coming to Canada because of Joe. Joe already has a, a, one or two companies listed around the stock exchanges, specifically uh, the TSXV, MacArthur Minerals, so he knows his way around the Bay Street, uh, the Bay Street market. Um, very good, sat on the probably the other side of the fence from me, he sat on the, uh, the legislation side, he sat on the Queensland Government uh, Gaming Authority for quite a while, so he understands legislation and lottery legislation from a, from a regulatory approval, a little bit more than we all do. Ali is uh, inherited from the old Lotto Gopher days, he's a director of Lotto Gopher, uh, last man standing if you like, instrumental in the transaction, very good financier. Um, he's gonna stay on the board as an advisor, uh, purely because of his knowledge through the old lot or go for days and yeah, he's very experienced in finance. So we need somebody like him on the board just to direct us uh, from, a, from a, an American perspective. Edward Tobin, he heads up freelotto.com. He's a principal of uh, Free Lotto. He will lead the charge when it comes to the, lotto, the Free Lotto expansion, integration into the, into the group, data integration, player integration, etc. so on and so forth. So Ed's not going anywhere. Ed. Uh, Ed knows freelotto.com inside out, back to front, and he will lead the pack and the charge for, from a Bravio perspective once the RTO is complete. Capital structure sort of speak for itself. Um, has anybody got any questions on the capital structure? We'll go through it. It's a very clean, it's a very clean sweep. It's very tightly held. We sort of know everybody that's in the, in the pack when it comes to our shareholders. Um, we have inherited quite an array of warrants from Lotto Gopher, but we've quite, uh, we believe we've got them quietly uh, under control there. But has anybody got any questions on the structure? Pretty straightforward. Low, low structure, low share structure, concurrent financing, that's what we're doing now, which I'll explain to you shortly. Pre-money market cap 64, under the radar, room for growth and scale. No, nope. all right, that was easy. So I'll be ended up with a barrage of questions there. So the lockup, um, with our bankers, with our lawyers, uh, with Fabian, with, we've been going backwards and forwards quite a lot regarding this. So we've got basically 80 odd percent of the stock today will be locked and loaded, so it's not going anywhere. We have various categories of investors, a various lockup procedure and process and protocol. I think I'm in this management and inside of three years, so I ain't going anywhere. The rest of the team ain't going anywhere. The seed investors have all agreed to, to the lockup Everybody understands the Bravio story. We aren't going anywhere. We want to dominate the market. So we're going to be at least, at least it's a five year turnaround, four to five years uh, business model for Bravio. But the, the shareholder structure, we think sits really well. We've got about 16% float fully funded going into the RTO, um, which is round about enough of what we think will, will give us a good little bit of liquidity and you know, it will drive the share price up. We've got quite a few market announcements and a little bit of news trail coming. Uh, shortly, which that will help uh, the liquidity, hopefully, in the stock. But has anybody got any questions on, on that? The, the lot will go for free trading. We didn't want to lock up the lot will go for shareholders because I suppose they're in enough pain as it is. Um, we want to help them gradually 
release and get their money back. That's part of our key focus. Um, I think they're in a little bit of pain at the minute. Uh, RTO financing, free trading stock, five million shares. Uh, that's at 60 cents. I'll just go back to the lock, the, to the warrants. The warrants, as you see, this warrant, uh, we're doing a half warrant on the, on the transaction right now. That's a 90 cent strike with a sunset date of 120, uh, forced. Uh, we think when we get to 120, we'll force that and everybody's going to be happy then. That, that basically levels out the plateau for the old lot that will go for shareholders coming across, so they're getting their money back at that point as well. 107 million on offer. Pretty much straightforward, really. We're going to try to, we might consolidate, we do, we'll work that out as, as, we, as we travel along post RTO. We'll see how we go with that, but we'll be advised by our advisors, Gravitas, will advise us on what we want to do there. Any questions on the share structure or the lockups or anything like that? What's coming through now? What we're going to do with the money we raise, pretty straightforward. We're not going to spend much on advertising. We've, I think we've established that through the way we run our business. So we're going to strengthen our team. Um, we do have three or four different companies coming together through the RTO process. We've all, they've got a few different models. We want to go into the, the cryptocurrency phase. So there is a bit of tech integration and a little bit of jiggery pokery there. But the majority, what we, we believe is, the majority of our expend of this RTO will be going on strengthening our team and expanding our business rather than marketing the business, which we don't need to do because we've already got our consumer. It's more about conversion of the consumer rather than marketing it or consumer acquisition. Uh, work and capital general corporate purposes, that falls into the different categories of lotteries. We'll, we'll break that up through our different sequence of lotteries. Three million, easy number. Uh, we're not going too hard at the minute. We will be doing, um, we do have a, a vision for Bravio, basically to maintain, do, to dominate the, 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 the crossroads in digital lotteries. Nobody's doing it just yet. It's a very fragmented industry. Um, we believe that we can consolidate the industry as a whole with the way we do business and the way we've already structured the foundations of the business. We can absolutely dominate the market. Uh, that's without any shadow of a doubt. And the, the work and capital and the work and cash go, will, will go in to help us to do that. But moreover, staff and middle management to strengthen the general expansion of the, of the company. We're going to scale quick and aggressive. It's as simple as that because it's quite an easy opportunity for Bravio to scale quick and aggressive because we already have the data, we already have the content, we already have the technology, we already have the smarts and we already have everything we need. So the team will be built a uh, little bit strengthening that senior middle management team. So, does anybody want to talk about the RTO, where we are in the whole process of that? We've been, we started our RTO process about 18, 20 months ago. Um, we haven't been pushed into any thing we didn't ever want to do. Um, we did visit the Lotto Gopher transaction before we actually transacted, if, if that makes any sense. Um, Lotto Gopher found its own path. We couldn't transact. Some six months later, we revisited the transaction originally, and we decided to transact. So we were about six months behind the eight ball with Lotto Gopher. We could have been a lot quicker, but uh, one thing led to another. We didn't transact, and now we have. So the special meeting of shareholders took place around about the 29th of April, so that went through really well. Um, and then we move to the next stage, which is all the due diligence and listing filing statements of the CSE. Three factors we need to do, three deliverables, capital raising, listing statement, shareholder approval for Bravio, which is a foot. We anticipate that we'll be pushing that shareholder approval for Bravio on or around the 10th of July. Um, and when that happens, um, we're on a rolling road down, we'll request for reinstatement, we'll have our three million to six million dollar will be raised, it'll be uh, escrowed, listed filing statements will be done on the numbers that we anticipate we're going to get in the in the three million. Request for reinstatement round about the third week in uh, July, and then it's all over, and then we actually execute what we said we we're just going to do in the presentation. Really, I think that's it, guys. Any questions? Have we got any questions from a? Oh. Yeah. So the guy has the company been around a number of years, and there's been options and warrants uh, issued, and they're just correct. Lot of golf. We inherited them. We we built Bravio with no options, no warrants. It was very vanilla. We've done a few capital raisings over the last 18 to 24 months, and we've built our business accordingly. And we've grew the business over the last probably two years here in Canada. 
very clean. No wines, no options, no nothing. And that was hard, believe you and me. But we inherited these, and you're correct. The strike price on them, some of them will, will dispense, some will, some won't. Um, you know, if, if the warrants do exercise at these prices that they say they're going to exercise, everybody's going to be happy, including me. <laughs> and so, so um, there was no balance sheet, no revenues, any kind of, as a business? We have, operating? yeah, yeah, we do have balance sheets, revenues and things like that, but we decided to take them out of this corporate presentation and should you want to see our revenues and our balance, I'll to walk you through that, or Fabian can walk you through that, uh, probably offline, it's not the right environment to talk about revenues, but we are looking at a, a three times multiple this year and growth again next year, exceptionally good growth next year. Um, I think you can understand how we run our business model in that uh, the scope for scalability is basically at our fingertips, it's in our own e ecosystem, we're not going to go out of our ecosystem and acquire consumers that are, that are not already there. Um, Yeah. So there's, this is not a... Well, last season we were on a run rate of around about eight or nine million. So that's, that's all I'm prepared to say just right now, but we'll talk about our yeah, revenues. So on a $2 ticket, you get 520, but you're saying the margin on your 520 is about 30%? Yeah. So it's that expensive, even though it's all out there on the, you know, electronically, it's that expensive to run the business? A lot more detail than that you're right enough I can explain a little bit more about the detail in the tech and how we operate there's all sorts of components around of what we do we do have an outbound call center that sells and we have rev shares with them and there's a lot of complexities in and around the business model and the finances of Bravio there's a lot of moving parts well I'm quite happy to, to sit and walk you walk through them anytime but I think for this presentation it's more we'll be here all day talking about the finances of Bravio and how we break down our financial structure We'll put it this way, I don't get any money anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so there's definitely a, a really, we're, we're an online, whether we like it or not, we're an online gaming and gambling company. So uh, our cost analysis and planning is so in depth and it's so to point that we have to maintain uh, a really high, a really high level of corporate governance around cost planning. Um, I just hope my name's in there when it comes to the salaries. Any questions? Any like, online questions? Oh. No? That's a first, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, Paul, uh, so which of the brands are currently sort of contributing to the revenues? Freelotto.com is the largest revenue contributor at the minute. And to believe it or not, I should have touched on it earlier, our, mm -hmm. we launched these into the market as data revenue, consumer acquisition. They're actually monetized. They're, they're, they're generated $3 million last season, unexpectedly. And uh, now David, who's, who you've seen there, the, our co-director, he's developing these even more to generate even more money. We've realized that there's actually a, a monetization tool as well as a data acquisition tool. So these brought in about three and the rest came from Free Lotto. Lotto Gopher was a bit of a, um, a non-starter really for us and I think the business model might not have been right. Rather than tweaking it, we've decided to lump in the Lotto Gopher business model into Planet Lotto, combine that business together and then look at a new vision for, for Lotto Gopher on the, in the digital cryptocurrency space. So the, yeah, so the, so the, the, these, these things are, are great, you know, they're great for finance and they're great for consumer. They just generally feed people into the bottom, bottom of our ecosystem and then we can look at who they are, business intelligence tells us what the spend is. Um, going in, uh, what, the reason why we launched these in Southeast Asia is the gaming industry as a whole, 30% of sales in the gambling industry is conducted in Southeast Asia. Huge portion of the industry. Lottery sales in Southeast Asia are limited, purely because of the way they operate their own lotteries and the way they don't want new lotteries to penetrate uh, their, their sales. So these, these have been in the, in the market now for quite a while. We're looking at launching uh, a lottery in India. Uh, it's quite a complex uh, business model. Um, it's in its infancy. We haven't quite cracked that code yet, but we believe we will be first to market on a mobile network selling a Powerball lottery ticket within those six months. Within six months, we'll have cracked that code. We've, we've sourced our partner. We've sourced legal opinions. It's all about how do we connect and put this thing together. But that's, you know, that's part of the vision for Bravio, as well as other things, which you'll probably hear post RTO in the market announcements all in its infancy just yet, but it's definitely scope for movement. I think what we need to walk away from is we need to understand the gambling industry and where Bravio sits and how we believe we sit in a unique position. I think I touched on earlier, the lottery industry of the gaming and gambling platform is the largest part 
of the gaming and gambling industry. Only 8% of sales is online, opposed to the sports book and the slots where you're looking at 25 to 45% in some cases. So the scope for movement in the industry itself, you need to position yourself correctly at the crossroads from bricks and mortar to, to tech. We've done that and we believe we've got a unique position where we've got so many people on our database, we don't even need to go and source new players. We have seven and a half million hits on our URL. We've got 1.4, 1.2, over 2.5 million followers on Facebook that we can attract tomorrow and ask if they would like to play it rather free lot or buy a Powerball ticket, depending on the economic value of the consumer. So, any other any questions? Well, thanks for your time, guys, and hopefully you have a bit of an understanding on Bravio. If you need anything financial, I'd, I'd like to sit and walk, walk through that with you. But, uh, right, thanks a lot. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody, on webinar. <laughs>